Hey guys, so I picked this intro. I should have renamed it 10 from the city, like my channel, since we left the city and moved to the country. But anyways, stay tuned for a lot of good insight. Hey guys, this video is going to be a little bit different. I'm going to share a little bit about my financial journey and how I made the mental switch becoming a budgeter. So basically, I watch a lot of YouTube videos of financial planners and one lady that I like a lot, she used to be in the investment banking industry, she said you should have a couple different checking accounts. One for your big ticket items, big bills, auto pay, car loans, mortgage, rent, whatever, your big ticket items, and another one that's reserved strictly for spending. So basically you should have two checking accounts because the reason why I was living check to check is because every week I'd have my paycheck in my account and my mind would say, okay, Lena, you have a little extra money to spend. When in reality, that wasn't the case. That money needed to be saved and built up for, you know, the next big auto pay that was due. So I finally made the switch to, yeah, let me budget. Let me visualize what's coming in, what's going out so that I can make better choices. Now, I don't have a, a background in finances, but I was able to come up with a simple Excel spreadsheet, and I'm going to teach you guys how to do it. So I'm formally trained in culinary arts as, as well as in social work. My minor is in health sciences, and I currently work in construction. So my background is not financial planning at all, but I think this little spreadsheet will help you guys achieve your goals. Oh, and by the way, I just want to share my blog if you're interested it's called Confessions of a DIY Homemaker, and it looks like this. Um, yeah, so if you're interested, uh, check me out over there. But yes, let's get back to the spreadsheet. Okay, so this is my budget, and as you can see, I have three sections. This is going to be checking account number one, and this is going to be checking account number two. So here's the monthly income, and all these are related. So say you have $500 more in income, that means you have $500 more to spend. But let's say you have um, another bill. If I were to add another bill here, that means this number would go up, and the amount that I could spend during the month would go down. So it's all relative it's all related so I'm going to show you how to make the spreadsheet because ideally you want to have this amount in your checking account at all times you know or, or at least a few times a month to cover your big bills and then the rest you can have in your spending account to spend on groceries gas I didn't put groceries as a main monthly bill because I don't know about you but when I have extra money I spend more at the grocery store when I'm tight on money I spend less so I think that should be part of your um, spending account. Okay, so what we have here is called a blank workbook. Um, there's plenty of templates on Excel, but I like to use a blank workbook. And what we're going to do is we're going to make three sections. So, you know, as big as you want. And then you're going to go to where this looks like a little window shape. And you're going to do thick outside border. Now, you can do this as creative as you want. And I like to make it so that um, the dollar amount has a little bit extra room so I'm going to slide it over. See what I did? I just went to the F, went to the divider area and slid it over. Okay, I'm going to do another one. So I'm going to three down, this many across, choose thick outside border. Then I'm going to take this one and slide it over so I have enough room. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing. Three down, Thick outside border. Then I'm going to take this cell and slide it so it's a little bit wider. Okay, then I'm going to make a line here just for visuals like that. So go across and go across. Okay, then this column I want to be my total, so I'm going to do a thick outside border. Do it again there and do it again there. All right. I want this to have some color, so <coughs> excuse me. I'm getting over cold, so this one will be gray. This one will be light orange, and this one 
will be green for money. Money, honey. Okay. Now, this square I want to be X'd out. This square boxed out, rather. This square boxed out. Okay. And right here, I'm going to put monthly income monthly bills and this one I'm going to put monthly spend monthly spending alright right here I'm going to put weekly here I'm going to put weekly here I'm gonna put weekly now you can be as creative as you want this is just my example okay so now we're gonna have to make the formulas we want all of our monthly income to be totaled up here actually first let's um, format everything for currency so just highlight it all right click press format and go currency all right there so we want this cell to be the sum of all the income we put here. So what you do is you, you click the cell that you want the outcome to be in. So right here, so you click it, and you go up here to auto sum, click that, and then you left click and highlight all the cells, stop when you get to the answer box and press enter. Okay, so let's do it for here. So you click the cell, Press auto sum, highlight all the cells you want to be added up, press enter. So let's do it again. Click the cell, click the auto sum, highlight all the cells you want to be in the formula, and press enter. And so that's how you do the auto sum feature. The auto sum feature is very helpful. If you want to stop here, you could just do that. But we're going to take, take it a step further and do some other formulas. Okay guys, so we completed the auto sum feature, which is very simple. You click on the cell where you want the totals to be. You go to auto sum, you highlight up, and when you stop once you get there, let go and press enter. Okay, so now what we want is we want our monthly income, but we want it to be broken up by weekly. So I just divided by four weeks. I know there's 52 weeks in a year, but for me it's simpler if I just divide it by four weeks. So you want this total down here. Actually, I don't really like the total down here. I'd rather it be right here. But for the sake of easeability, we'll just keep it here. So we want this to be this number divided by 4. So you click here. You go to the auto sum feature because you're about to make a formula. And you want it to be this number. So you click there. And then you go to the formula bar. Now, the... Remember in algebra, division was a forward slash, so the same with on a computer. You do a for forward slash, that means divide, and we want to divide the monthly number by what? Four. So you put a four, and then you press enter. And so let's see if it works. So say you make $16 a month, right, which would give you $4 a week. So it works. So let's do the same thing here. So you click here. What you could, yeah, we could have made all the formulas and then just copied the template over, but we're just going to do it this way. I'll show you how to do it step by step. So you click here where you want the formula to be. Then you press auto sum. Then you click at the first value, which is here. And then you go up and you put a divide sign, which is a forward slash, number four, and press enter. Okay. Same here. Click where you want the total to be. Then you click auto sum. Then you go to the first number in the equation, which is going to be that. Then you go to the formula bar, press the divide sign, press the 4, and enter. All right, so that's good and great. So now we want the, this to be related to this to be related to that. So now we know how to divide, how to do the divide formula. Um, so the next step we're going to do is we're going to make all these cells related to each other. Monthly income minus my monthly bills equals the monthly spending. So this is a basic um, subtraction equation, right? So we know our formula is going to have to have the minus sign in it because we want a subtraction equation. 
we want the formula to have subtraction in it. So this is where we want our answer to be, right? So we click here, then we go to the auto sum feature, and we want it to be this cell, right? Then we're gonna put it, go up to the formula bar, put the minus sign, this cell, right? So we want it to be F5 minus L5, and then you just press enter, and you should, and the formula, the formula should be there. Okay, let's plug in some numbers. First, let's lab label this check-in account number one, and this is going to be check-in account number two. Because really, um, these um, amounts of money that you have in your bank should be separated out so that you can visually see what you're working with each month and what your liabilities are each month. Okay, so, um, and I don't really necessarily consider big-ticket items liabilities, okay? I really don't. All right, so let's say, what are the two names? Lisa and Troy are the two mock people. So let's say <laughs> Lisa makes 6000 a month. Let's say Troy makes 4000 a month. Okay? So that means 10000 a month. That means weekly they have $2,500 to spend. So let's click here and let's highlight this just so that we can see. Okay. So they have $2,500 a month to spend. So let's put all the big ticket items. So let's list them out. We have rent. We have car note. We have credit cards. We have savings. So you want to have money for savings. Okay, so really your savings should be separated out into a different account, but I'm not going to go into that here. Um, utilities. Utilities. Say you have a loan. You're paying back somebody. So let's put loan. And what else? Um, that's good for now. So let's just put in rent is $2,000. Um, credit card. Car note is... 800 credit card is 400 savings you want to save 200 a month which really you should be saving more utilities and say you owe somebody and you pay them back 200 a month okay so that means you have three thousand eight hundred dollars worth of bills okay and each week you need to save nine hundred and fifty dollars of your paycheck in order to cover the three thousand eight hundred dollars worth of bills so that means each month for spending, you know, groceries, um, gas, Amazon, whatever. Each month you have $6,200 to spend on all those things. Okay, guys, we're almost done, but I think you should put incidentals. So we'll just put a question mark. This is like unknown things that you might be on auto pay. So let's do 300 for that. So that means now you only have $1,400 a month, I mean a week, to spend frivolously. And I consider gas and groceries frivolous because you know if you have gas to drive somebody somewhere or if you have extra money to spend all that money, all that much at Costco or whatever. So I do like to put groceries and gas in this column. But you could also put Amazon, um, you know, whatever, day trips day trips whatever i mean you also have the savings here but um and this money could actually be going into a separate account so the goal here is to have this is my goal for this budget so i have my income direct deposit in my bank and then every week because i get paid weekly i'm going to transfer a thousand dollars and four one thousand four hundred seventy five dollars a week into this checking account and leave the rest in this account okay so that when my bills are due it all should be here okay it should all all your bill money needs to be in here in order for you to pay them and what you can also do is you can make it so everything's paid at the end of the month so that this all can be there by the end of the month so however you want to do it this is just a way for you to see because what I was doing is 
I was looking at my bank and saying, oh, I have $10,000. I can buy this X, Y, and Z. No, it's all going to be eaten up in bills. I cannot spend that. Or as if I were to look at my checking account and say, oh, you know, I have 2000 or, or whatever's in here, fourteen seventy five. Yeah, I can spend that, but I can't go over for the week. That's how I need to compartmentalize my finances and my money because seeing it all here in one pot was not working out. So now I can see what's coming and what's going and what needs to stay in and what can go out. So I hope this is helpful for you. Um, super easy. I pretty much taught myself this. Somebody taught me the auto sum of do a simple addition um, calculation. I figured out going back to algebra how to do the other formulas. I know there's plenty of you out there who are way better at this than me, but this is just my budget for dummies, and I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Let me know your thoughts, anything you would tweak, anything you would change. Let me know. I'm open to all input. I'm a lifelong learner here. I'm not holier, holier than thou. I love to learn and improve, and I'm excited to go on this new financial journey. We have a few, we have our hands in a few different pots right now, and I just want to improve and I want to get better. This budget, I can ideally apply the 50, 30, 20 rule where 50% goes towards needs like big bills, 30% goes towards my wants, and 20% goes towards my savings. So tweak that savings number, that money that you put um, in your big ticket item column, that number you put for savings, auto transfer that out as well to a separate savings account, and that's what I have. I just didn't really want to go into it in depth here. But yeah, definitely separating your money. That's the way to go, guys. And I'll see you next time. Um, talk to you later. Bye.